I'm going to test the spill resistant pressure vacuum breaker, the SVB. My name is Bart Starr. I'm here at the Viking 2 Backflow Training Center here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So let's get started. First thing we have to do are those steps we take prior to testing backflow preventers, and that's notify, identify, inspect, and observe. We will notify our facility that we're there to test our SVB. We will identify it. We will record the make, model, size, and serial number. We will also identify the application, what system our SVB is supplying water to. This is the Watts model LF008PCQT in three quarter inch. Next, we will inspect for correct application, orientation, we'll make sure nothing is modified or altered. We'll make sure we have our right height clearances as far as installation. We'll check for any necessary approvals. Then we will, make, we will uh, observe for any kind of safety hazards or anything leaking on our SVB. Next, we will, <clears throat> I'm gonna be using this gauge here. This is the Midwest Model 847 five valve differential pressure gauge. We have our two bleed valves up on top and we have our three control valves on the bottom. We have the high side bleed, the low side bleed, high side control, the low side control, and then the bypass or the vent. The only one we're gonna be using for this test is the high side bleed valve. There's two steps for our SVB. Step one, we're gonna be testing the differential pressure drop across our check valve. And step number two, we're gonna be testing for our air inlet valve opening point. Both of these steps have a minimum gauge value of 1.0. There's an additional requirement that the reading we get for our check valve has to be greater than the reading we got for our air inlet valve. So next, let's go ahead and do our flushing sequence. We're gonna flush our test port and we're gonna flush our vent valve. Our components for the SVB, this is shutoff valve number one, this is shutoff valve number two, this is our test port and this is our vent valve. Our flushing sequence, connect a hose to our test port. We will open our test port. Flush and close. Next, we'll flush our vent valve. And the way we're gonna do this is we're just gonna back our vent valve screw off just a thread or two, just a little bit. That's about a whole turn of our vent valve screw. That's all we need, so we'll flush it out. And now we'll close it, tighten it back up. Step number one is our differential pressure drop across our check valve. We have to make sure that our gauge and our SVB are at the same level. We're a little low here right now, so let's raise our gauge up. That's a good height right there. We'll connect our high side hose to the high side control valve. For our gauge preparation, we'll open the high side bleed valve and we'll close the rest of our gauge valves. Close the low bleed, close all of our controls. We'll close the low control, the high control, and our bypass. Next, we'll open our test port. Okay, we're bleeding now through our bleed line. Next is to stop the bleeding. We'll close the high side bleed valve. Next, we will close shutoff valve number two. 
and close shutoff valve number one. If we look ahead to step number two, which is our air inlet valve opening, we're gonna take that reading when water starts flowing out of our vent valve opening. The more water we can see coming out of our vent valve opening, the easier it is to get our reading. So in this step, before we close shutoff valve number one, let's just add some more water to the top of our SVB. So using your bleed line on your gauge, crack the high side bleed valve and add some more water to the air inlet valve, the top of the air inlet valve. Okay. Next, we'll close shutoff valve number one. And next, we will remove our vent valve screw. Now remember, on your line pressure gauge, that's indicating how much pressure we have behind our vent valve screw. So we're right there at about 50 pounds. So let's just loosen the screw and bleed it down a little bit so our line pressure gauge starts to fall down nice and easy. And when our differential gauge needle begins to fall and gets to about 10 or 11 pounds, then we'll remove the screw all the way. Differential gauges drop in 12, 11, there's 10. Let's take the vent valve screw all the way out now. Okay, we're going to record our check valve reading when our gauge is holding steady and water stops dripping out of our vent valve opening. So we've got a check valve reading of 4.8 pounds. That's a good reading because our minimum gauge reading for our check valve is 1.0. That's the end of our check valve step. Step two is the air inlet valve opening. From here, we're going to open our high side bleed valve. We'll crack it open. When the gauge needle starts to fall, we will watch for water to begin flowing out of our vent valve opening. When we see it starting to do that, we're gonna record our gauge reading. So let's crack our high side bleed valve. Okay, gauge needle's fallen. Okay, we're watching the gauge and we're watching for water to begin flowing out of the vent valve opening. Okay, the air in the valve opened right at 1.6. This is a good gauge reading because our minimum is one. This SVB passed the test because the reading we got for our check valve is greater than the reading we got for our air inlet valve. For test completion, we're going to reinstall our vent valve screw. We'll close our test port. We will open shutoff valve number one, and then slowly we'll open shutoff valve number two to pressurize our system. We'll open all of our gauge valves. And remove our hose. That's the end of the test. I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks for watching.